is Salim Sakarya. I'm going to talk to you about the conclusion and discussion part of Enzyme Activity Lab. Um, I have the data collected during the lab and entered in a spreadsheet. I have data for the initial investigation and the open inquiries. Open inquiries are done by manipulating temperature, pH, and substrate concentration uh, with uh, many samples. Uh, during the initial investigation, students have calculated the rate of, I mean, collected data to calculate the rate of reaction under these conditions. And any manipulation in the open inquiry section is done under these conditions. So, by changing any of these conditions, of course. Now, what are we going to do is, using this data collected, we're going to um, calculate the rate of reaction, which is the slope of the line uh, when you enter this data on a chart and perform a best fit line. The slope of that best fit line is your um, is your rate of reaction. So before we do that, uh, since these are different samples of the same reaction, uh, we're going to calculate the mean of each of the entry. How are we going to uh, calculate the mean value for the each of the entry is um, you can enter. If you're working with a spreadsheet, you will enter average uh, function. So when you start typing in the function, first, when you want a function in this cell, you have to hit equal sign. And then since you're asking for the average, start typing average, and it'll give you a list of um, functions. You select average from here by double clicking on it and then select the range of values that you want to take the average so here are my entries and then hit enter this is the um, average of these numbers since they're all zeros the average of those numbers are zero and then you don't have to do this same thing for each of these entries at, at like 15 second 30th second you just pull this down and the spreadsheet will automatically apply the same formula for each of the cell and for each of these entries how are you going to pull it down by the way select your cell go to the right bottom corner with your cursor your cursor will turn into a um, black colored uh, cross then hold on to your uh, left mouse button and pull it down it'll calculate all the <coughs> averages so you see this um, sign click on that sign and say ignore the error because it's telling you just like this number is not the average of the number adjacent to that cell so just ignore that because you, you selected what you want to average so these are the averages simply what you can do right now is just select this data and create a chart for that you're gonna make a scatter plot but I want to show the deviation in my um, in my data so I want to do some uh, descriptive statistics that uh, to show you how well I am estimating this number when I do this when I do six trials or six different samples with this um, so to do that to show people uh, what is the amount of error when I'm estimating the mean of this investigation I use um, two standard errors error bars which is 95% uh, confidence intervals so to calculate this I have to calculate the standard error of the mean 
and I have to calculate the standard deviation. So to calculate the standard deviation is, again, I'm going to enter a function. I will hit equal sign and start typing stde. So that's stdev is the function to calculate the standard deviation. Double click on it and select the data for standard deviation is the same data set so and hit enter that's the standard deviation for uh, for this time interval and put the, the, apply the same thing put down and it will apply the same formula for each of the row and again just ignore the error by clicking on that sign it'll give you a pull, uh, drop down menu select the ignore error do the same thing for uh, standard error of the mean you have to enter the formula this time it's pretty uh, simple formula oh it's standard deviation divided by the square root of sample size so this is the standard deviation for this row divided by the square root of sample size the formula for square root function is sqrt so you double click on it to select and then your sample size is six because you have six entry or six trials or six samples so sample size is six close parenthesis and hit enter that's the standard error of the mean for this row and pull it down to apply the same thing for each other row two standard error of the mean or like 95 percent confidence of all interval is just multiply this number by two so enter a function in here click equal sign and select this value multiply sign which is a star in excel and multiply it by two hit enter and then to apply the same formula for each of the row just select that that cell and put down it'll apply the same thing so these are your standard error value for each of the entries in your data set so what I'm going to do is I will plot this data on a chart to do that I select my x and y values x is the time y values is the uh, mean oxygen gas produced milliliters per second um, milliliters I'm sorry um, so I will go to insert tab on the top and then I will go and select the scatter plot and I select a scatter plot with markers only I don't want to see any line that connects the uh, connect the markers because I, I don't care about that line that connects the markers I care about one line that is a best fit line that probably will not connect the dots so I will hit this and that's my chart let me pull this up here okay these are all the entries and I want to see two things I want to see the a trend line a best fit line uh, there's a straight line so I can make predictions uh, and calculate the uh, calculate the slope of that uh, of those entries uh, and I want to see the how well each of these entries are estimated so to do that I will enter the error bars first how are you going to enter the error bars? To do that, um, click on the chart area, and then you will see chart tools tabs. There are three of them. Using these, you can manipulate a lot of things on your chart. But I want to do right now is just enter the um, error bars and create a best fit line. So I'll go to layout tab and I select error bars and I'll select I'll, I'll go more error bars options and I'll select custom 
because I will enter values for each of the um, each of the entries. Otherwise, it will it'll do it right, by itself with a given value. So when I select custom, I have to specify the values to make it custom. So I click on specify values and erase this because it's the value is not one. The values are these, so I will have to select them. And I, uh, this is for positive error value, which is going up in the x-axis, I mean in the y-axis. And I have to do the same thing for negative error value. Erase, I mean, let's delete that and select the standard er uh, error of the mean again to standard error of the mean, which is 95% confidence intervals. And I hit OK. Now you see the error bars in the chart. Okay. Uh, these are the error bars. I will close this. Now what I want to do is I want to create a best fit line, a linear fit in my chart. So I will make it kind of bigger so you can see it better. And I will go and hit trend line. There's many trend line options. Click on more trend line options. It'll give you uh, the linear fit by default. This is what, uh, what we want actually. But you can select any of these linear logarithmic polynomial, uh, whatever. I will select the linear one and I will change its color because I want to see it uh, better. So in this menu, I go to line color and I sol I'll select solid line to be able to select the color that I want. And I want to have red so I can see it better. But it's very thin. So I want to make it thicker, go to line style and adjust the width of the line. I'll make it 1.75. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Now, we have created our chart, but we have not calculated the rate of reaction yet. There's two ways. You can use the functions in the spreadsheet and you can use your chart that you have just created to calculate the uh, calculate the rate of reaction which is a slope of that trend line so you remember from algebra it is very pretty easy to calculate that you just select two spot on the uh, two point on your line and then using the x and y values of those uh, points you can calculate the uh, rate of reaction and your students and any AP student should be able to uh, make that calculation with a trend line but right now to make my life easier I will just hit that cell I'm gonna write here mean rate of reaction and I'll make it blonde bold okay and here I will enter the slope formula I mean slope function that slope function is actually calculates the slope of a best fit line that uh, could be created for these entries so to be able to do it I have to select my X and Y values I select as you can see here the Y values first I have to indicate the Y values after I indicate them hit the comma and then I have to indicate my X values and then hit enter this is the slope of that line that is a very large number I oh I just want to make it smaller okay I will have three decimals so it's 0 0.021 milliliters of oxygen gas produced per second in this experiment. Um, so this is how you uh, process your data 
after the initial investigation, which is calculating the rate of a reaction uh, in the enzyme activity. Uh, so that's it, and I hope this is helpful.